challenge. Some people uh, didn't want to uh, join in with us, others decided to. This film could be shown in a museum almost. Uh, just as it can be screened uh, in a movie theater, and Gaspar has this tremendous talent. What motivated you? Why did you decide to be a co-producer? For me, it's a script. It's very rare in our profession to get this kind of script, which is so open, which provides such freedom. There was a technical challenge, maybe, too, when it came to the visual effects so for Boof. No, there's no technical challenge. There are two kinds of effects. You have very realistic effects, uh, and then you have effects where you don't really know what you're going to have to do to start with. And that's really interesting with Gaspar. We can try to make progress with the effects, uh, play with them, and find the right solution. Uh, there was tremendous freedom shooting the film. It's a film that uh, would be totally impossible to finance in the US, for example. It's in English. It looks as though it's American, but it was shot in Japan. Yet it's Vincent, Olivier, and Pierre that uh, enabled this film to be made because they have a mindset that's very, very open. So long as we didn't uh, shoot way beyond the budget, they just said, well, do the strangest, uh, the best film you can. And it's a very exciting experience. Perhaps one last question? France? You say you, that you like negative reactions. There were some such reactions in the balcony. Some people laughed when you see uh, the uh, uh, sex uh, as though uh, one was in uh, the uh, mother's tummy. Now, the final scene, is it an incestuous scene in your view? No, there's a new birth at the end. This new birth, if I correctly understood the film, it's a birth uh, because of a relationship with the brother. What did you understand? I understood it was the spirit of the brother that entered her, even if technically speaking it wasn't his sperm. Given the way she uh, experienced the last sex scene, there was an incestuous idea, even if technically speaking, it wasn't uh, her brother's sperm. No? He loves his sister, wants to be reincarnated. What did you see at the end? What did you read into this? when the child appears. Well, for me, the child was conceived by the spirit. Well, physically, she was with her friend, but it was the spirit of her brother that she saw, she felt, and who was sort of the father. Watch the film a second time round. In the screenplay, we uh, didn't really know who it was. Was it the sister, the mother? That's why things are very hazy. There's another special feature in the film. We had ex some experienced actors, but other people uh, weren't experienced at all. They'd never seen a camera before. And it was really interesting to work with people who were just discovering the film-making uh, world. It was a lot of fun. He came to the casting, in fact, uh, just uh, to accompany a friend. He was living in Tokyo, and he said, yeah, I saw Seul Contre Tous, I loved it. Uh, he started talking with me, and I said to him, well, I've got the right uh, actor for this character. And Nathaniel said, well, I'd like to be a, a director. Uh, I said to him, when he said, I'd like to direct a video clips, and I said, well, why, you can act in my film. Franz, you have a line in the film, you say that you have a constant feeling to have your brother above you, but in, 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 the, in the film you say you have a constant feeling to have your brother above you. 
Uh, but during the film, did you have the constant thing to have a camera above you, or well, was it complicated in terms of no? Of, of I mean, camera and I just kind of I got used to um, Gaspar being on this gurney, and you know, I called him the mad scientist because it was like this insane contraption that would like come up above us, and like you know, I never knew where the camera would be. I think I complained mostly that the camera wasn't on my face enough. Um, <laughs> You know, because it's like, yeah, that's just vanity probably. But, you know, no. I mean, I didn't know where. I mean, at one point we were doing a scene and the camera hit me in the head, you know, because I don't know <laughs> where and when the camera was coming. Um, but it was during a crying scene, so I just started crying more. And Nathaniel, did you yourself hold sometimes the, the camera? What? Did you yourself hold, held the camera? Um, for one scene, yes. Uh, the, in the morgue when I come back to life, and Gaspar started passing out, so I grabbed the camera and kept going. Il était très fatigué. Il était toujours là sur la caméra. Et il m'a dit oui. Et après, la vérité, c'est que. Well, in fact, I fell asleep on the set. And uh, so he took over the camera and did some of the shooting. And the technicians burst out laughing. One last question, and then we'll have to wind up. Andrea Dutkin, Germany. There are a lot of scenes that you view from above as though it was God looking at earth and hell. And then at the end, there's this hope because the child is born. Did you want to make a religious film in one way or another? No, no, uh, that uh, wouldn't suit me at all. That scares me. No, most religions talk uh, about uh, life after death because people are afraid of death. Well, here, uh, Oscar is given a book that talks about reincarnation. Watch the end of the film a second time round. It's not really in that much in favor of uh, incarnation, and it's certainly not very religious either. What I prefer is uh, 2001, Kubrick's film. It's my very favorite film. It's like a religious atheist film. I'm an atheist and proud to be so. Maybe I made more of a hallucinatory than a religious film. Okay, I think we'll wind up with this last question. Yeah. Um, there are two films here in competition set in Tokyo. Um, and I happened to, I, I talked to Georgina Pope, who was oh. working with you, you know, in Tokyo. Yeah. How, how important is that city? I mean, it's, it's such a strong part of the character. And why was it so Im important for you to film there? What, what were you trying to... In Tokyo? Yeah. I I'm sorry, in Japan. I think the closest, uh, closest city to Metropolis. You know, when you see Metropolis, there's something about the city of the future. Maybe at the beginning of this century, people would go to New York and they, they had a vision of what the future could be. Uh, I haven't been to, to Beijing, I, haven't, uh, I was in Hong Kong, but I think Tokyo is far more futuristic than Hong Kong. And uh, I really like the city and I like the people. I like and, uh, and visually, it's far more colorful and uh, I, I don't know. Maybe the other city that's really colorful is Las Vegas, but uh, I hate that city. <laughs> okay, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.